Positioning is probably one of the hardest things to understand in CSS. The position property allows you to place elements in relationship to other elements on the page. And there are many different ways of doing that. The easiest one to understand is called static positioning. And that's just the normal positioning of objects. It should already make sense to you. Here we have a page with a headline and a few paragraphs, as well as a grid that has some photos of some cars. If you want to learn how to do that, make sure you check out this video in my YouTube channel. It's called Creating a Grid of Images with CSS. So if we take a look at the example, you can see that this just happens to be in the normal flow of the page. Right now, if I go back into my index.html file, here's where all those images are. And if I just take that and cut it out and paste it after this other paragraph, you can see that it repositioned it to be underneath the second paragraph. So that's just the normal way that CSS works. Things happen in the order that they are placed, but you can actually modify that with the positioning property. The first way you may try to use positioning is by setting the positioning attribute to be relative. That means that it's relative to wherever the object is, but it can be moved. So let's go back into the example. I'm gonna put my images back where they used to be in the middle of the two paragraphs. Go into my CSS file and in the image list ID here, I'll add a position and I'll change that to relative. It doesn't look like anything's happened, but we can say now I want you to take it and move it 50 pixels from the left and that is a big change by assigning the position relative attribute we can move it in relation to wherever it used to be by a certain amount so we can say left 50 pixels or minus 50 pixels or we can also say top and do 100 pixels that moves it from wherever it used to be just 100 pixels from the top and now to the left so that's how relative works pretty easy to understand right Next one is fixed, and that's fixed to the browser window or also known as the current viewport. So let's go ahead and switch this out to be a fixed position. Notice that something important happened. When I changed it to fixed positioning, it actually removed it from the flow of where it normally would be. So it's almost as if that image wasn't there and I just had the two paragraphs. The image is now sitting on top of the second paragraph. So I can say left by 50 pixels and I'm going to say top by zero and let's see what happens. Now it's whenever you do fixed positioning, it places it relative to the current viewport. And that means that it's going to move with the position of the browser. So if I say left 50 pixels, then it's going to move it from the left of the browser window or the viewport by 50 pixels. So let's go ahead and clear that out by saying zero and now it's aligned to the top left of the page. And it doesn't matter how I resize my page, it's always gonna be sticking there. So in the same way, I can say bottom, and it's now gonna be aligned to the bottom of my page and move with the page. So it took it out of where it used to be if we give it these left and bottom rules. Otherwise, it kind of aligns it to wherever it used to be. Okay, so let's take a look at one more, and this is the tough one. So absolute positioning means it's relative to the last a relatively positioned element. If there is no parent element that is positioned, then it works like fixed, which means it will be relative to the browser window. So let's do that last part and maybe that'll make sense when we do an example. So let's do absolute positioning here. And notice that it looks pretty much like fixed positioning, right? It's behaving in the same way. So absolute positioning here, and then we'll say bottom zero, and it looks a lot like fixed positioning, right? It looks actually exactly like at bottom, and then we'll do left, left, and zero. And it's exactly the same as fixed positioning. This is what you use when you want an element to move together with another element. So if you want this image to move with something else, this is how you do it. But we don't have the HTML written properly to show you how to do that yet. So I'm going to go into my index.html document. I'm going to create another div here and I'll give it an ID of activate. I'll add some text and I'll scroll down to the bottom and I'm gonna close this element so that it wraps the image list element. So I got this new element called activate and it's sitting right here. Right now it's not styled, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some styles for it. So activate at the very bottom. We'll give it a background color and we'll make that this gray right here. We'll change the color of the font to white and we'll give it a width of, uh, say, 150 pixels. Now let's make it 100. 
and we'll go ahead and we'll set the text align to center so that's in the middle it's sort of like a little button we'll give it a padding of five pixels and now we've got a little button going right here now this object right here is still sitting inside this element it's just that we've taken it out of the normal flow by using position absolute so if I modify my activate element to have a position of relative look what happens it is now moving in relationship to my button so it's no longer moving with the page notice that if I make the page bigger or smaller it's actually moving it with the button it's a little hard to see so let's go ahead and modify the image list element and we'll tell it to we'll tell it to align to the top of that element by a certain number of pixels let's go ahead and do 20 pixels here see how that looks so we could see the button and that's maybe a little bit too small let's try 30 uh, 28 sounds pretty good so now we've got you can see the button now and you can see that this element is aligned to this button if I make my window bigger or smaller you can see that it moves with the button as that button moves so that's what relative positioning is all about now if I want that to be a drop down what I can do is modify the element so that when it's right here in normal view it's hidden I'll set the display attribute to none that actually hides that element right and what I could do now is use the hover pseudo class so when somebody moves over this activate button then my image list is going to display as a block element so now when I roll over this item my little image grid shows up and that's kind of how you do a drop down menu using only CSS one more thing that I'm going to do is notice that when I roll over the button it switches over to the text view because technically this is a div that I can select the text with so I'm going to add a cursor attribute here and set it to pointer and whenever I roll over this element it's not going to switch over to the text element it's actually going to switch this little hand tool which looks more natural and so that's how you do a drop down with CSS pretty easy and hopefully it helps you understand how the positioning attributes in CSS work. I'll type some text in here called view photos and I'll go ahead and close it at the bottom of the image list I'll go ahead, I'll create some text here for I'll type in view photos as the text of the element plus I'll go I'll type view photos as text and I'll go down to the bottom and close this oh let's see I'll create some text called view photos and I'll scroll down to the end of the image list element and close my activate ID there I'll go ahead and add some text I'll go ahead 
I'll add some text and I'll scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to close this element so that it wraps the image list element. 